Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're doing some more composite functions. Composite function. What's a composite function? A composite function is basically when you got a function inside of another function. All right, a function inside of another function. So here we got we got the two functions right here, f of x equals this, g of x equals this. We're trying to find g of g of 3. G of g of 3. I know that looks... It might look a little intimidating to you. Don't let it scare you. Don't let it scare you. I'm going to break it down make it seem real simple. And then after you know how to do it, you got to go forth and practice and do a whole bunch of problems until it really makes sense. All right. So what I do is I work out. We got two functions here. We got a G function on the outside. We got a G function on the inside of these parentheses. G function on the inside. G function on the outside. All right. What I like to do is I like to work out the inside function first and then work out the outside function. But I do it one step at a time. Just do things one step at a time. Work out the inside function first. What is the inside function? G of three. That means that we're taking this G function and we're replacing all X's with threes. Wherever I see an X at, I'm replacing it with a three. So this X is get, gets replaced with three because look what it says. Instead of saying G of X, it says G of three. So right here, where is an X? I replace that with a three. That's what you got to do. So first thing we're going to do is find out what G of 3 is equal to. We're going to find out what G of 3 is equal to. So we got G of 3. I write my 6. I write my minus sign. I don't write X because I replace all X's with 3's in this problem. So now, but when we do this, you got to be careful. You should use parentheses. Whenever you replace a variable, you should use parentheses. All right. So I'm going to use parentheses around the 3 and then I'm going to write my exponent. Right? My X1 is not going inside the parentheses. Right? My X should be in parentheses. Whatever I replace X with should be in parentheses. Whatever I put replace X with should be in parentheses. All right, so now I'm using order of operations. 6 minus 9. All right, now notice that's not negative 3 squared. That minus sign is outside the parentheses. So you do 3 squared first and get 9. Then you do 6 minus 9. What's 6 minus 9? Negative 3. We got to know how to subtract Bigger numbers from smaller numbers. We got to know how to deal with negative numbers with arithmetic. You got to know that. So this is negative 3. So the inside part is negative 3. G of 3 equals negative 3. G of 3 equals negative 3. How do I know that? I just proved it. I showed you. I broke it down. Replace the x with a 3 and do the math. 6 minus 3 to the second power. You got to follow the order of operations. You got to follow the order of operations. So if you're not tight on the order of operations, Go back and review. I got some videos on this channel on order of operations. You got to get tight on order of operations, right? So that's 3 squared. That's 9. Notice it's not negative 3 squared. It's just 3 squared. That's 9. So then you got 6 minus 9. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. So G of 3 equals negative 3. Now, deal with the outside function. Deal with the outside function. Now I'm doing G of negative 3 because this is the same thing as negative 3. So this and negative 3 are synonymous. Just like in English class, synonyms, right? Synonyms are words that mean the same thing. Different words mean the same thing. That says G of 3. That says negative 3. That's different from this, but the value is the same. Just like with synonyms in English class. All right? So now I'm doing G of, instead of G of 3, negative 3. Now what does that equal? I go back to the same function, the same function, and I replace the X's right here and right here, right here and right here with negative 3. So now I'm doing 6 minus negative 3 squared. Follow order of operations. Follow order of operations. So now I got negative 3 squared. That's a negative sign inside the parentheses. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. Because negative 3 squared, what does that mean? It means negative 3 times negative 3. Two negative 3s. That's why the exponent is a 2. Because it's two negative 3s. That's why the exponent is a 2. It don't mean negative 3 times 2. That's not what it means. It don't mean negative 3 times 2. That ain't what it means. It means you have a multiplication sentence where you have this number, which is our base, right, or our factor, multiplied, and it shows up twice in the multiplication sentence. Negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. So now I got 6 minus positive 9. 6 minus, that minus sign was already there, positive 9. All right, so just 6 minus 9, which equals negative 3. That's our final answer. That's our final answer. G of G of 3 equals negative 3. Now, what did I do? I worked inside out. I worked my way inside out. I figured out what G of 3 was first. I figured out what G of 3 was first using this function. In this problem, f of x was irrelevant. We wasn't worried about f of x. We only worried about g. All right? So I worked, out, worked that out first. I got negative 3. 
And then since now I know that G of three and negative three are the same thing, they're the same thing, they're the same thing, they like synonyms, right? I could replace this whole thing with just negative three. So instead of writing G of G of three, I could write G of negative three. Replace this with negative three. Replace this with negative three. Now once I replace that with negative three, now any place I see an X at in the G function, I replace the X with negative three. So all we're doing when we're dealing with composite functions, we just replacing stuff. We just replacing stuff, then do the math. Replace, then do the math. Replace, then do the math. Replace, then do the math. All right, so we get negative three. All right, now go get some practice. I'll see you on the next video.